Good morning. I'm Dr. Patrick O'Gara from Brigham and Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School in Boston, and it is my pleasure to be here with you and Dr. Mark Krieger, who is the head of the Heart and Vascular Center at Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center, as well as the immediate past president of the American Heart Association. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Pat. We're here to talk about the vision trial, which was just recently discussed at a late-breaking clinical trial session. Can you give us your 30,000-foot level review of this? So, indeed I can, Pat. Uh, the vision trial uh, was a study that looked at the uh, association of high sensitivity troponin T and 30-day mortality in patients undergoing non-cardiac surgery. And this is a very important trial and interesting as well in that it did in fact determine uh, that there was an association. So indeed, these were about 22,000 patients undergoing non-cardiac surgery, major orthopedic surgery, other major general surgery, vascular surgery, in whom troponin T was measured prior to and then over intervals for the first three days following surgery. Now, in the entire population, about 22,000 individuals, the mortality rate was 1.2%. Once they analyzed the data, it was found that there was a threshold of about 60 nanograms per liter that identified a group that had significantly greater mortality risk. And at that threshold, the mortality risk was 3%. And as the measurements or the assay, the levels got higher and higher, the mortality risk was greater. So there was, if you will, a dose-related prediction of mortality at 30 days using this assay. Uh, interesting, Mark. Uh, among the patients who underwent surgery, were there patients undergoing elective surgery, urgent surgery, emergency surgery? I would think yeah. it might make a difference. I, I believe it would, too. Now, he didn't specifically say, the presenter, Dr. Devereux, didn't specifically say how many patients were undergoing emergency surgery versus those who were not. But what he did say was that they had pre-surgical measurements of troponin T, and in a number of individuals, it was already up. So I'm assuming that there was some urgent basis to their surgery uh, because it may have been taking place in the midst of other stressful circumstances that would have elevated the troponin T. Were you able to see any differences in outcomes or in the level of troponin T measurement as a function of the type of surgery performed? That was not reported. But in the question and answer period that followed, um, he interestingly stated when asked, who should have this measurement, he said, well, in those individuals over the age of 65 and in individuals who had vascular disease who were under the age of 65. So I might infer from that that this was the higher risk population in whom he was I seeing see. these elevated levels. What, what do you think this will have in terms of its impact on practice? Don't we drive ourselves crazy already with random troponin measurements following non-cardiac surgery? Well, I think one of the point was there were a number of individuals who had elevated levels of troponin T who didn't have any other evidence of myocardial injury, and yet they had a higher risk of 30-day uh, mortality. So. How we'll translate that to clinical practice? Well, we need to see that yet, but at least it plants a seed. Should there be a population in whom we measure troponin T, follow it, and then with the uh, knowledge we get from the assay, or at least in those individuals who have a high level of troponin T, should we be more aggressive in our perioperative management of those patients? I see, and maybe in particular our postoperative management? I'm not. Well, exactly our postoperative management. So, uh, we're, we're measuring, if, if the troponin T is elevated preoperative, we're already sensitive Right. if it's elevated. We, we already know that they're at higher risk. But as we follow these patients and in the first couple of days postoperatively, if the troponin T is elevated, do these patients require more intensive therapy, beta blockers, or, or, or whatever? Uh, and the answer I don't uh, is still to be determined. Well, certainly from your perspective of, as a person who's run a very busy inpatient clinical service dedicated to vascular medicine and the care of a lot of vascular surgery patients in the perioperative setting, how will this affect your practice tomorrow? I think in the immediate circumstances it will not. Uh, I think we're already very, very vigilant in monitoring these patients, identifying those who are at the highest risk and being particularly uh, sensitive to their perioperative needs in the postoperative period. 
making sure that their, uh, uh, their hematocrit is being adequately addressed, uh, making sure they're adequately oxygenated, putting them on beta blockers if clinically indicated, and doing those things uh, to reduce the risk of cardiovascular events postoperatively. So I'm not sure it's going to affect it right now, but this is a much broader population than the ones I might typically see undergoing vascular surgery. Right. I mean, we have a lot of general surgery patients, a lot of orthopedic uh, uh, surgery patients. Uh, it really needs to be determined how much that will affect practice. Now, if I understood you correctly, you sort of laid the seed for, or planted the seed, I should say, for a potential trial in which care would be intensified versus usual in patients identified with this troponin assay around the time of non-cardiac surgery and then tracking outcomes? Is well, that one way to do it? Ideally, that's the best way to handle a lot of the markers that we measure uh, that are associated with risk. Use that to help us determine what's the best therapy and the way of determining the best therapy is, of course, to do a clinical trial to see if we have an elevated marker or not, uh, how that will affect long-term management. Well, I think the vision trial investigators should be congratulated for as providing us with this data set, which I believe was multi-center in its acquisition, and uh, the generalizability of the findings may therefore be uh, improved compared against a single institution uh, study, and lots more work to do in this particular area, as you've just implied. Indeed, yes, it was a multi-centered uh, trial, Pat, and I think it will have uh, broad applicability because it dealt with a large range of people undergoing uh, surgery. So the findings are interesting. Uh, I think they do indeed have clinical implications. We'll see uh, as we move forward whether or not it will be practice changing, but an important trial presented here at ACC 17. Thanks, Mark.